Hey guys, it's Corbett Lunsford from the Building Performance Workshop. I'd like to talk about how to commission a kitchen exhaust fan. First thing that I always do when I walk up to it is turn on the light. That's going to be important later so that I can see what's going on inside of it. But also you just want to check that out because it's something that people will complain about if it's not actually working. Then I turn the fan on without touching anything else with the unit. And you can see that this unit does not sound like it's running. That might be because this grill right here is actually installed backwards. You can see that it's curved, so it actually needs to be facing this way so that it gives the fan some room. Now you can see if we reinstall this and I turn it on. That is the sound that a fan should be making. Now we're going to actually test it. So I'm going to remove this. Uh, some people will say that this needs a hood on it to test an exhaust flow like this because the this currents and the turbulence that's introduced by this fan that's right there next to this fan that I'm going to use to measure it is going to make it a little weird. However, one of the most important things about diagnostics in general is that they are repeatable. So what I'm going to do is very carefully document that I used this tool with a certain setting of how many square inches I've got. So I've got 38.5 square inches is what I'm measuring. And then I simply, uh, the machine is going to multiply the feet per minute of velocity times the area that I used. And since I'm giving the next person in line, in case they wanted to double check me, both the area and the final CFM reading, they could retest it and see whether I uh, knew what I was doing or not, just simply because of the repeatability, whether or not this is actually accurate. Now, in the case of this fan, what we're actually doing is testing to make sure that it actually sucks air. And since it is ducted to outside, then we know that all this is good. Now, how much are the people who live here going to be using that? We don't know. Maybe never. Uh, maybe all the time. We don't know. So the behavior is something that you can't really predict. What we're trying to do is just make sure that there's air flowing through it, period. So now that I've got it on high, I'm going to take a timed average. And I can see that I've got about 126 CFM flowing through this fan. The last thing that I'm going to do is make sure that that backdraft damper up in there closes after it's done running. That was a good one. Let me show you one that does not close. So when you don't hear that little clink at the end where the backdraft damper closes, that means that wind is going to be able to get into the duct and down through this thing. And it might cause comfort problems. It might cause some condensation. We don't really know what's going to happen, but ultimately that's what the diagnostics are for. So that you can be sure that either you know what's exactly going to happen or you're not sure what's going to happen. And if you're not sure, maybe you want to fix it. Don't forget also, if you're using this tool and getting right up close to that fan, be very careful. I just broke this fan apart with my tool and it probably didn't uh, do any good for my tool either. So be careful. Obviously I will be paying for this today. Uh, so I hope this doesn't happen to you. I hope that this has been educational for you. Please tune in next time. Thanks for watching.